Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night's Inspiration here at New Beginnings Chapel. We're so glad that you're joining us tonight and hope that you will sing along with us as we lift our voices on these favorites and wonderful old hymns that I like to call the classics. So come on, join us as we lift our voices. To, to God, God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice, O God. Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He had done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender, who truly believes that moment from Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He had done, great things He had taught us, great things He had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, the purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he had done. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done. Father, thank you so much for tonight and this wonderful opportunity to lift our voices and to sing praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you for uh, every family that's represented tonight, Lord. And as we gather around computer screens and Lord, as we type uh, messages, uh, letting us know what's happening in our lives, how we need prayer, the, the notes of joy, all of these. With this technology, we literally can talk to each other uh, as we are uh, coming live into the living rooms of uh, the families that are watching tonight. So I pray, Lord, that whatever prayer request is out there, whatever a note of praise uh, that folks will uh, just send us a note. Let us know how we can be agreed in prayer with them or rejoice with them. Tonight, Lord, be glorified, we pray, in all that we say and all that we do. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen and amen.
Again, we're so glad that you joined us tonight. Um, if you are not already in the loop or you don't know what that means to be in the loop, basically that's the way that you find out what's happening here at New Beginnings Chapel throughout the week and the month and the year. And so if you would like to know uh, what's going on or uh, have some announcements coming up, you can get in the loop. Just take your cell phone out and text the word loop, L-O-O-P, to 509-309-0958. And please fill out the information um, that comes back to you by text message because that helps us to be able to stay in touch with you. Um, sometimes a text message just doesn't work, so we need an email as well and a phone number. So if you will do us a favor and fill that out with your name and all the information requested, we would greatly appreciate it. Continue joining us as we lift our voices tonight and sing to the Lord. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I gave my heart. To Jesus, the longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter. Tell me, Lord, 
if you think there's a way I can try to repay all I've taken from you. Maybe, Lord, I can show someone else what I've been through myself on my way back to you. Jesus, I wasted it so help me, Jesus, I know what I am. Now that I know that I'm needed, you so help me, Jesus, my soul. It's Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure. Father, tonight we come to you. We just want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your Holy Spirit and his presence in this place. Lord, we want to thank you for your blessings that you give to us each and every day. The opportunity that we have, Lord Jesus, just to be able to gather together and to worship you, Father. May we never, ever take that for granted. 
Father, as we've seen this last year, it can so easily be taken away from us. And so, Father, I just rejoice in the fact that we can gather together and we can lift your name up and sing and we can worship you and we can give you thanks and praise for all that you do and all that you've done for us. And as we come into this Easter season, Lord Jesus, I'm especially grateful for your death and resurrection and the fact that you took our place. And Lord Jesus, that we can come boldly to the throne and we can make our requests known to you because you are a God who listens and you are a God who always answers. So Father, we just want to give you praise and glory for that tonight. And now, Lord Jesus, as we share um, the requests that are before our body with you, we just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would uh, incline your ear to us. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for hearing Kay's prayers. Thank you as we just gather and sing now this last song before we go to Table Talk. What a joy to be together tonight and be able to lift up your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This is one of my favorite songs, Wonderful Peace. Far away in the depths of my spirit a melody sweeter than song in celestial like strains it unceasingly falls for my soul like an infinite call Welcome back to Table Talk. We are so glad that you were able to join us as we uh, had a wonderful evening of Singspiration. Um, Kay and I love doing uh, Wednesday nights and just being able to come into your, your home via the internet, uh, wherever you may be. And so tonight, uh, I wanted to just share with you, before we jump into Table Talk, 
uh, just some of the upcoming events that are going on. And if you've had a birthday this last week uh, or during this month of March, uh, I want to just wish you a very, very happy birthday and uh, hope that it's the best that you had. We've got um, a service for uh, my very dear friend, Randy Rogers, that is coming up on April the 2nd at 2 p.m. Uh, here at New Beginnings Chapel. And it's a time of celebration of life. Randy and I worked together for almost 17 years as uh, team pastors uh, here at the church from the very, uh, pretty much, pretty much the inception of the church. And so um, you're invited to a very special service again, April 2nd, celebrating Randy's life. Um, he passed away uh, about three and a half weeks ago uh, due to COVID. And so please remember our church in your prayer. We would sure appreciate that. Um, means a lot to us. Um, then also coming up, uh, our youth are continuing to uh, follow in those footsteps that Pastor Randy set for them with our youth pastor, Josh um, Heinrichson. Josh is going to be taking the kids to one of Randy's favorite groups, Mercy Me, on April 8th. Um, and it is coming up for all 5th through 12th grade to be able to go to the Mercy Me concert uh, April 8th. And for more information, uh, if you're watching in Scotland, uh, you may not be able to go to the concert with them. But uh, if you have information, or one information uh, here in the local area, please see Pastor Josh uh, for more details. Also, we've got an all-church work party coming up. So if you're in the area, you'd like to come and be a part of that with us. Saturday, March the 26th and April the 9th, uh, we are getting ready for um, Easter, sunrise service and church here uh, at the chapel. And so uh, if you'd mark that on your calendar, March 26th and April the, the 9th. I believe that was right. Easter sunrise service coming up at 6.30 at Pioneer Park. And we've done this uh, for almost 10 years now. And we just invite all of the churches and uh, pastors to join us in that. We're going to be putting together a choir. So if you sing and you'd like to be a part of that with us, uh, please contact the church at 509 527 3385 509-527-3385 for our sunrise service at the park 6:30 one hour um, and then you'll be able to attend your regular services in your church uh, wherever that might be here in Walla Walla. Also men's retreats coming up. Um, this is a very special time. Uh, I've uh, been responsible for this for um, all of the Northwest. Um, uh, the men within the Church of God. And so um, even though we're a non-denominational church, uh, we tie in with uh, the Pacific Northwest Association in events that are going on. And so that is May 13th through the 15th. Uh, that will be a weekend and uh, for 100 bucks. So we'd love to have you go with us. And for more information on that, if you'd contact me here at the church, 509-527-3385. And then we've got the all-church camp out that's coming up. And this is one of my wife's favorite events of the year. September 9th through 11th up at Harris Park. Reservations can be made at 541-938-5330. Ask for Courtney and tell them that you're with New Beginnings Chapel. If not, the whole park is reserved and uh, they will tell you that it's all sold out. And so we've got all sorts of things going on. Um, we do life here together at the chapel, and we strive to, to just understand and, and work together uh, as a body of Christ, as family. And so my, my message on Sunday uh, was very, very timely. Um, we had just gotten a call on Saturday night that uh, Kaylani's brother, uh, Dennis Pulser, had passed away. And uh, Dennis was a great guy, great fella, um, I've, uh, he's, I've, we've been in each other's lives for probably 43 years now, and um, just a, a fellow who loved the Lord, loved his family, and uh, because of, of health problems and situations, um, the Lord called him home uh, last Saturday, and so we are uh, honored to celebrate his uh, life as well. So I was gonna, I was gonna speak of all things. Can you imagine a pastor preaching on tithing? And it was the end of my uh, church on purpose, and the church on purpose in their tithing, in their giving to the Lord, in the ongoing work of the Lord. Um, and I believe in what we're doing is what God's called us to do. But then the Lord laid on my heart that uh, we needed to maybe shift gears a little bit. And so my message Sunday morning was, our refuge, God is our refuge and our strength. 
And uh, I felt like I needed to really share that for those who are out there wondering, why does God allow this to happen? Or where can I turn? Or is he really there? Does he really, does he really care? And there's a song that we sing, um, um, I know uh, that you're at work even when I don't see it, even when I don't sense it. Uh, I know that you are at work on my behalf. And uh, everybody, uh, we got to understand that in this uh, title of the message, God is our refuge and strength, found from Psalms 46.1, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, poignant scripture for us to know that not only is God working on our behalf, but he is our refuge when we go through those trials and those situations and um, the, um, those, those crazy things that go in our lives that we're not expecting. And so I, I based the message on Psalms, from Psalms 46, 1 through 3. And it says, God is our refuge. God is our refuge. I gotta, let me pull this scripture up here for you. God is our refuge and our strength. Uh, a time, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Father, I praise you tonight and I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love for us and I thank you for your presence. I thank you that we can come before you with thanksgiving. We can come before you with praise and we can come before you with our requests. So tonight, Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll just fill our cup with the presence of your Holy Spirit as we talk about this message and these scriptures that you've given to us in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You see, God is our refuge and our strength. Hebrew word for refuge is tetka. And this means to flee for protection, to confide in, to put one's trust in. And I wanted to double it up with, what does the dictionary define refuge? It defines it as a shelter or protection from danger, trouble or to take refuge from a storm. It's a place of safety or anything to which one has recourse for aid, relief, or escape. And I like to think of that as our, our refuge in God because as Christians, through his son, Jesus Christ, and the infilling of the Holy Spirit, uh, we have actually more than what the world has. The world thinks they have it all, but we have the strength of our Lord. I don't know how people get through the loss of a loved one, a friend, a tragedy, a situation, uh, and not be walking with the Lord. They depend upon themselves. They depend upon their own resources, and uh, they depend on, on people, but people and your own resources will let you down. So I I love the fact that uh, he is a place of relief and escape and uh, refuge. Uh, All of us have experienced some type of trial, tribulation, situation at one time or another. And it it seems like if something's going to go bad for for somebody, um, it, it will. And there are others that it doesn't go bad and things seem to go well, but... I use the illustration of Job. Job is, uh, he said, he said, uh, man is born for trouble as sparks fly upward. So we know that there is, there's going to be situations, and if we could all tell stories of uh, the situations, you know, I think we'd all be on the same page because there's something that's happened to this brother, this one, this one, and this one. And people think, well, you, you Christians, you just live pie in the sky. No, we're going to go through this, the, the garbage, the 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 trouble, the situations, but my God is there to walk with me. My God is there to to, uh, uplift, strengthen, encourage, and he knew we were going to go through that, and how can God do that? Through the power of his Holy Spirit. So the question is, is how can we experience God as our refuge and strength in times of troubles? Don't troubles come in all shapes and sizes? I mean, they come in all shapes and sizes. Hebrew word is sard, meaning distress, troubles, uh, straits, adversity, affliction, anguish, tribulation. And we know that, as I just said, we're going to face that. But I I want you to to realize with me, God is spirit. Um, As I shared with the congregation, it's... 
God is not one that we can run into his physical arms. I mean, now, there are brothers and sisters that are used of God that can hold us and talk with us and, and comfort us. But, but running into the arms of God, uh, shielded from the things that trouble us in life, um, we're, this is a life of faith. This is a life of faith. It's a spirit life. But as human beings, we experience very real, tangible, physical troubles. And we need more than emotional comfort, don't we? More than emotional comfort to see us through. So the times that we experience uh, the moving of the Spirit within our services, the times that we experience... Um, in the relationships with brothers and sisters, uh, the, the, the presence of the Lord. Um, there's the emotional side of that, um, the, the, the raising of the hands, the, the, the saying of hallelujahs and, and, and amens and uh, standing to your feet and, and thanking God. But I, I, gotta, I gotta tell you this. If we look, if we if we if we look to the times, we experience these real tangible situations, and we're living in a spirit life and a life of faith. We need more than emotional comfort to see us through, don't we? We need more than emotional comfort to see us through. God wants us to find refuge in something more lasting than a good emotional experience. And I believe that we need the corporate worship as we do in order to get together with brothers and sisters. People say, well, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. No, you don't. But it says, forsake not the assembling of the brethren. And where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. And it's, it's calling us to come together But he's more than a feeling. God is a living God who's active in our lives. And he wants us to find refuge in something more lasting than a good emotional experience. The definition of refuge, we see three distinct ways God is our refuge. I love this. God is a person in which to confide our troubles. God is a person in which we are able to confide our troubles. God's word is a place of protection and safety when we find ourselves in trouble. And God's spirit provides the power to sustain us through those troubles. Would you agree with me tonight on that? Gone through those. This is, I shared with the congregation on Sunday that this is kind of a summary of, of uh, several messages that I have preached over these last uh, several months and knowing that God sustains us. God sustains us. Do you know that? Do you believe that? Do you receive that? Do you accept that? Do you understand that? Do you live in that? Do you, do you allow God to sustain you, knowing that he is a person and that he comes into our presence? God is a person in whom to confide our troubles. Let's talk about that just for a second. We've got to cry out to the Father. It says, you know, finding refuge is going to God and the Father in prayer. And it says, cry out to God. Confiding our fears, our hopes, our feelings, our anxiety, our confusion, our, our lack of ability to fix things. For God really truly is our true refuge. And we have to be honest with him. I love this. Prayer isn't how God learns what we're thinking. Prayer isn't how God learns what we're thinking. He already knows before we can articulate it. Psalms 139, verse 4 says, Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it. You know it all. Prayer is how God reveals to us what's in our hearts. You think about that. Isn't that true? Prayer is how God reveals to us what's in our hearts. When we talk to him in honest conversation, here's where the rubber meets the road. 
It's what we really express to him. It's what we really express to him, what we're really thinking. What we might hide from the rest of the world, we can't hide from the Lord. See, because I believe prayer is how we draw near into the presence of God by faith. How's your faith tonight? Are you walking with the Lord? Are you trusting in the Lord? Are you crying out to the Lord? Because I believe he hears our prayers. We've just gone through a situation with Pastor Randy and with my father-in-law, and, and uh, we prayed earnestly for their healing. We fasted for their healing. But the outcome was not what we wanted. We pray, Lord, according to your will. And that's a hard prayer to pray because we know that there are times that God's will is for a loved one to go home. No matter how, how much the doctors do, the hospitals do, how much we pray, um, he knows your heart. It's not because you don't have enough faith that someone has died that you're praying for. But as a believer, you have to accept and know that God is in control of this. I believe that he hears our prayers like a child unburdening herself or himself to a loving parent. We are able to let go of trying to figure out how to solve our troubles. Think about that. Letting go of trying to figure out how to solve your problems. Trust that God will intervene in his time. 1 Peter, or uh, Psalms 62 uh, 8 says this, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. Psalm 73, 28 tells us, But as for me, the nearness of God is good for me. I have made the Lord God my refuge, so that I may tell of all your works. Psalms 91, 1 through 2 says, One who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will lodge in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And Psalms 142, 2 says, I pour out my complaint before him. I declare my troubles before him. And Psalms 34, 17 says, the righteous cry out. Are you righteous? Now, I'm not saying self-righteous. You know, people don't raise their hand. No, I'm not self-righteous. Righteous. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. Every day we're striving to be more like Christ. And we are righteous in God's sight because we are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. God's word is a place of protection and safety when we find ourselves in trouble. Think about that. God's word is a place of protection and safety when we find ourselves in trouble in trouble. We need wisdom to make the right decisions, don't we? No, I'm really, I'm asking that question. We really need wisdom to make the right decisions, don't we? We need to know what to do. And I believe with all of my heart, God's word is the place to go to find that answer and to find that safety. It's amazing to me how God speaks to us through his words. But sometimes we find ourselves in trouble by our own making, by our own decisions, by the paths that we decide to go down, even though we know that we shouldn't. And we may have gone down that path, and somebody comes along lovingly and takes a hold of our hands and leads us back. But it doesn't mean that we're not going to sow what we, we reaped. What, what you sow... Let me flip that over because those two words got mixed up. What we, what we sow, we're going to reap. What we sow, we're going to reap. And that's why I tell people, you know, your, your, your past life before you accepted Christ, that was another time. And yes, you still will reap what you sowed. But by, by sowing good seed now, you're going to be reaping the good. And the, the, the old stuff will go away. It will go away, almost like on a, a timeline. Perhaps what we did was 
running foolishly ahead of God instead of waiting on him to provide. Perhaps it was a sin issue. We chose to disobey God's clear command in Scripture, and now we're reaping the harvest of what we do, have done. But God's word is literally a place that we, we need to run to, everybody. We need to run to God's word. We must learn to trust that doing what God says is always best. And boy, the world wants to take us the other way, doesn't it? Wants us to say, oh, those Christians, they're just a bunch of crazy hypocrites that go out and say one thing and do another. And I don't want to be classified in that category. I want to be a man of God, a man of integrity. Have I made mistakes? You better believe it. Have I made wrong decisions? You better believe it. Have I uh, reaped what I've sown? You better believe it. But I believe that God gives us wisdom so that we don't have to walk through that crud puddle again. So that we don't have to walk through the muck we can see with spiritual eyes. That we stop seeing through physical eyes and we see through spiritual eyes and we realize where that's going to put us if we go through that again. Those thoughts that come into your mind. Those pictures that have been planted in there from what you've seen. God can erase those and take them away. We don't have to keep repeating, repeating, repeating. We've got to learn to trust the Lord. Trust that doing what God says is best, even when the world or culture says it's foolish. I'll probably get myself in trouble with this one, but I shared this on Sunday, everybody, that... Um, the, the law of the land says that it's okay to go ahead and move in with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And, and the, the statement is normally because of finances. Uh, but I, I gotta, I'll sit here and tell you tonight, that's not God's way. Uh, it's not kick the tires, take it for a spin, um, you know, see if the bumpers are going to hold up. Um, it's not like a car. What it is is that if you fall in love with someone and you court them, you date them, and you uh, treat them with respect, um, and you fall in love and you get married, God honors that. Now, am I, am I telling you that if everybody does that, that people aren't going to end in a divorce? No, I'm not, because our personalities all fall into this. But I'd rather go along God's direction than not. I've seen um, the disappointment in God. And I've seen um, when he has had plans for my life, as well as when he has plans for your lives, and we go a different direction, it's like he has to stop. I, I picture it like the, the angels who are around us going, well, we got to wait for that season to end now. Um, you made that choice. There were some other things that were going to happen that were going to be pretty cool, but you decided to go a different direction, so we got to wait. And uh, will they come about? Yeah, they'll come about, but you got to get your head where it needs to be. And that's in the presence of the Lord and into the Word of God. And so um, uh, the world says it's okay to move in with each other. The world says that it's okay for a whole lot of other things that I won't go into detail tonight. But the Word of God tells us no. God, the Word of God says no. This is not. Um, and, and you need to, to, to abide in me for protection and safety. See, because God becomes our refuge when we trust His Word more than we trust the culture or even and especially our own feelings. The world tells you to listen to your heart, doesn't it? Listen says, listen to your heart. Word of God says that the heart will deceive you. Oh, pastor, that's that's an ouch. If, if somebody's gonna, oh, ooh, that one, that our hearts will deceive us. God's word is the only place that we can find security and protection because you ready for this? It really truly is the only source of truth. It really is the only source of truth. Now you're saying, oh, so you're saying that everything else out there in the world is not. And you're saying that, that we can't. No, what I'm saying is, is that as a believer in Christ, I mean, if you're watching tonight and you're not a believer, of course this isn't going to make sense. But as a believer, knowing that the, the enemy tries to deceive you and tries to throw things at you, to, tries to take you off course, get you off path, stop you from running the race, but the Lord is saying, I'm, I'm right here. I've given you the Holy Spirit. Uh, trust in me. Uh, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. 
John 14, 6 tells us this. It is Jesus, God's perfect son, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Can I say that again, guys? It is Jesus. The question that I ask you tonight, then, is who is the word of God? Who is the word of God? And this scripture, it says, get into the word of God. So the word of God can get into it. Doesn't that make sense? That if the word of God is Jesus, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Second Samuel, let's jump into the, uh, the uh, Old Testament. Second Samuel twenty two thirty one. As for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is refined. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. Psalms 23, 6 says, Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, hell to me is total separation from God. Eternal life away from God would be hell. People say, well, well you know, I can accept Christ on my, my deathbed and I can become a Christian. What, what fun is that? What good is that? I mean, I, I, I accepted Christ when I was 12 years old. I messed up many, many times until I was 21 and I rededicated my life to the Lord. Uh, had I given my heart to the Lord? Yeah. Had I walked away from the Lord? Yeah. Uh, but the Lord was faithful and he continued to woo me back and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when I rededicated my life, it didn't mean that, that everything went perfect, but I will tell you what, my eyes were opened and I was able to see things a whole lot different than I was when I was 12 years old and I went to a Billy Graham crusade and, and accepted the Lord. Uh, we grow, we mature, we become uh, more men and women of God that God has called us to become. And there should be wisdom, there should be insight. We should be able to see things that we weren't able to see last year or the year before with these eyes. We need to see them with the spiritual eyes and be able to understand them and to be able to say, you know what? I don't need those anymore. I'm just going to take them and throw them away. You know, and those are the bags that we carry in our lives that we think, oh, but, 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 but I once believed that. Well, do you know what? God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can change you. Man can say all manner of stuff to you that he wants to say to you. But let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit tells you and you, you hear the Holy Spirit, you know. You know. I can, I can talk till I'm blue in the face trying to get my point across. When the Holy Spirit does it, the Holy Spirit does it. And I'm just a seed planter. And so are you, if you're a believer in Christ, telling someone about Christ. You don't jump in somebody's face and say, you rotten sinner, you're going to hell because you're going to do that. You'll turn them off. But if you lovingly come alongside of them and let them know, and let them see your life. Let them see you're not perfect. You mess up, but you love the Lord with all of your heart, and you believe in the power and the, the, the protection and the safety of the word of God. So Psalms, uh, let's take a look. That was Psalms 26. Psalms 4, 8 says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, have me dwell in safety. I love that. In peace. Uh, you know, as, as David, if this was David writing these scriptures, you know, or the men of Korah, or there were several people who wrote uh, the, the Psalms, but in peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, have me dwell in safety. And he was in the midst of being being uh, stalked by Saul and wanting to be killed. And wasn't that an irony that Jonathan, Saul's son, came alongside of him and became an armor bearer for him? Amazing, amazing how God works. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, have me dwell in safety. So these are all in the world, the, the, or the word telling us you know, and the word being Christ in our lives, coming to life in who we are and what we do and how we live. And number three is God's spirit provides the power to sustain us through our troubles. I stayed uh, quite a while on, on this, this part of a series that I was on, sustaining us through the troubles we know that we can't physically run into the presence of God. But God has provided us a, us a way that he is physically with us. What do you think that is? He is physically with us. Through the indwelling of his spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the spirit of God. 
who comes to live in every true Christ follower at the moment of salvation. Now, we can talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, crying out for the Holy Spirit, but when, when Christ forgives us as our sins, when we ask Him to forgive us our sins, He forgives us of our sins, but then He doesn't just leave us alone to go out and sin. Again, He gives us the Holy Spirit, but then it says, cry out, continuously for the filling of the Holy Spirit, for wisdom. It says, seek wisdom. That's the, 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 the very first step of the, the knowledge of fear of God, knowing that he is who he is. Not that he's going to strike us down and, and, and trample on us, but, but the honor, the reverence of God, who he is. And we don't respect God today. We don't respect God today in the fact that we take his name in vain and we call people all sorts of vile things and use his name at the time. Uh, let me tell you, um, Wisdom comes when we honor God for who God truly is. But the Holy Spirit comes to live in, in each one of us, and we learn to confide in the Father and commit to obey the Word of God. Jesus, we are empowered, strengthened by the Spirit of God. Believe that tonight? I hope that you'll make some comments tonight uh, on, on the page. You'll let me know what you're thinking about uh, the message and the scriptures that I'm sharing with you. Because we go back to Psalms 46.1, again where it says, God is our refuge and strength and very present help in trouble. He is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Are you going through a trial right now? Are you going through a situation in your life? As I said to the congregation on Sunday, your refuge, it better be God Almighty through his son Jesus Christ and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The word very means exceedingly, greatly, up to abundance, to a great degree. Strength means might and power, and help means one who helps, who comes to the aid of. So the Spirit of God is present. I just sit here this, tonight and reemphasize that. The Spirit of God is present. He is with us, providing the abundant power we need in every moment of trouble. In every moment of trouble. Do you believe that God knew that we would need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Do you believe that? Do you believe that God knew that we, I mean, we've just been, been talking about that. He promised the disciples that after he returned to the Father, he would send us the one who is that helper. Very present Helper, And take a look at John 14, 16 through 17. If you want me to back that up with scripture, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and I love this, and will be with you. And will be with you. He loves you so very much tonight. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I just invite you to take a moment and ask him to come into your heart, to forgive you of your sins, to be your Lord and Savior, and to place your feet on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. See, I believe that's how the Holy Spirit, he's wooing us, and if he's wooing you tonight, he empowers us to be able to walk away from the world and to walk into the presence of God Almighty through His Son, Jesus. See, it says ways the Holy Spirit empowers us. The Holy Spirit is the one who has the power to help us pray honest and confiding prayers from your heart. You know why? Because He knows your heart. He knows your heart. In Romans 8, 26 through 27 says this, In the same way the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. I love that. He intercedes. When you pray, ask the Lord to intercede on your behalf. Intercede for the prayer request that, that you do. And, and you know, I, I say this... It, it, it didn't say that if the disciples would fast uh, or if we will fast. It says when we fast. We, these things that we pray for need more than praying. 
than prayer. It's that we are, uh, we are interceding on the behalf of others through the power of the Holy Spirit by, by giving up something that we love to do. I don't know about you, but I love to eat. I love to eat. And uh, I was talking with a brother the other day, and there's, there's one-day fast. There's seven-day fast. There's 14-day uh, fast. There's 21-day fast. There's, there's 30 and 40-day fasts. And, and God is saying to us, understand this more and more. Understand this more and more. For I am here. Are you serious about what you are praying about? Are you serious about what you are asking for? And so in closing tonight, these last few scriptures, the Holy Spirit has the power to enlighten our minds to understand the word of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 14. We've received not the spirit of the world, I love that, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts. See why we need to to be filled with the Holy Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. And then you've got John 16, 13 that says, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. The Holy Spirit is the one who enables us, strengthens us to live according to what Jesus commands. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. We are living a faith life here, guys. A spirit faith life in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Do you believe that? I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And Philippians 2.13, For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God is our help in a very present time. Very present time. If we find refuge when we go to the Father in prayer, we find refuge when we commit ourselves to obeying the words of Jesus no matter the cost. We find refuge when we depend on the Spirit of God to lead us, empower us, and sustain us through our trials and tribulations. And John 16, says, These things I have spoken to you. I believe he's spoken to us tonight. So that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. But take courage. I have overcome the world. And Nahum 1, 7, Old Testament, The Lord is good, a stronghold in a day of trouble. And he knows those who take refuge in him. All of this to tell you, the men of old went through a lot of the same stuff we go through today. We're just in kind of a different culture. But they hurt, they cried, they feared, um, they died. Um, but those who put their trust in God Almighty, uh, I believe, are walking with the Father today. Some two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 years later. The power of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Even though we don't hear a lot about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God rested upon them, and the Spirit of God was real, and the Spirit of God is real now in our lives. So I encourage you, if you wrote down these scriptures, go back, take a look at them, memorize them. The enemy will try to hit you and Try to knock you out. He goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Devour your effectiveness as a believer. So I encourage you to walk with your heads high. Be the man of God, the woman of God, the boy, the girl of God that God has called you to be. And watch what God will do in your life. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for your promise that you are there with us even as we walk through these trials, even when the outcomes are different than what we are praying for. Father, we will not stop praying. We will not stop seeking you. We will not stop bringing our request to you and the desires of our hearts. And we will believe that the Holy Spirit going before us will work all things for good to those who love the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for being here in the sanctuary tonight, those of you who are here. And uh, we love you guys, and we look forward to seeing you this Sunday morning. Uh, Josh Heinrichson will be bringing the message to you. Um, and I am looking forward to hearing what Josh has to share. He's going to be talking about the infrastructure of the church, which is the small groups. You remember the church? See, I was going to end it here, but I'm, I'm just going to go a little longer. The, the church, the early church, uh, was, was home churches. And no, we're not, we're not going away from corporate church, but we believe that we need to have more and more of these small groups around our community drawing people in who won't necessarily come to church because they don't think church is important, but they will gather with friends. And so we're going to be putting together uh, a leadership group uh, of small group leaders and uh, coming together and finding out more and more of what God has for us to do as a church. So if you're ever in the area, uh, please stop by every Sunday morning, 9 o'clock and 10.30 for two services. We um, would look forward to you coming and visiting, and we will be lifting you all up in prayer, asking you to lift us all up in prayer. And thanks so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.